Like they actually move, they're not fake. Uh, back to some good old trail. Day 89. I don't know where we came. We camped last night. There's this, okay, so we stopped at the that Mohican Outdoor Center, which was awesome. And and then we stopped, I think. Eight, and a half, eight miles after that, so we stopped right around mile 19.1 of the day yesterday. There's a spring, and we felt we had to go walk down this, we had to drop our packs at a gate, walk down the road about a quarter of a mile. There's a spring right on the side of the road. And uh, that's what we did. And then, then, we, then we turned around and went a mile and a half to camp. There's supposed to be some cool lakes coming up here this morning. Maybe in the next 40 minutes. But, man, I'm just so happy to be back on some real trail. Like, like I, I'm thoroughly disappointed with... And I feel bad because there are a lot of people who put some work and time and tradition I guess into those trails in Pennsylvania but man oh man just I mean you go in there you become bored to tears there's no water you're forced to camp at places where water is so you you hike I mean I don't know how many 15 and 17 mile hikes I did without being able to get more water Um, I know. Oh, carry more water. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I carry more water. And then I go 17 miles. Then we stop and camp. And then you're kind of like forced into a group of other people who need water too. So, you know, even though there's camping everywhere in Pennsylvania to begin with, which works great, the second half of the state, you're essentially forced to go through with one group. So keep that in mind. If you're hiking this trail next year or later on in the year, when you get into Pennsylvania, um, once you cross Dun Cannon, pretty much whoever you get on trail with in Dun Cannon, you're going to finish the state with them. <laughs> it's 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 kind of weird, unless you do like a 30 mile day or like a 29. You know, we did two 27 plus mile days and one 20, like almost a 26. So it's 25 and a half. And then we did two 27, 27 and a halves. But, um, yeah. It, 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 and it sucks because, like, if there's one person in the group who's kind of crappy, um, even though you don't hike, so when you're hiking with a group, I, I don't mean that you're like, you don't hike with anybody. I mean, look around me. I never have anyone around me. But what happens is, is in the evening, everyone piles into the shelter or they pile into a campground and a shelter and if someone's there and they keep everybody up really late every night um you know it's you, you just it's, you just have to deal with it so keep that in mind for pennsylvania um i haven't had that situation anywhere else and there are all these camping spots but it's like you can't camp there unless you carry if you, unless you have a spare two liters worth of water and it's like oh well where am i gonna get that because the last water I walked by was 15 miles ago. So it's it just kind of presents this really funny like ordeal where you, every night you're hanging out with the same people. Luckily, we we had pretty cool people um, in that group. And then once you get to Delaware Water Gap, uh, some of the herd, they stay behind and take a zero. Just because the same thing. You've been traveling with all these people and it's been several days and then you're you're like oh i think i'm just gonna stay here and relax there's a couple of restaurants in delaware water gap there's a free place to stay which is really fantastic free places to stay are great um there's water at the church 
that's a that's a novel thing and that's the other thing too in, in pennsylvania you, like you get into like these towns and there's just like a rant like one of the towns you get into there's like a random person who has a sign on in their yard that says oh hikers can get water here and you pass all these spigots and you have to walk an extra you know three tenths of a mile to get to that person's front yard and then three tenths of a mile back on trail because there's just no water unless you're drinking out of the river and the rivers in this state or in that state you know they, they have old old timey contamination issues not that that's keeping anyone anyone from drink you know filtering and drinking the water it's just that if you you just feel like it's the water could be a little nasty you know when you see that nasty like foam on top of the water <laughs> like you don't want to drink that you don't know what that foam is you don't know who's dumping their septic tank into the river you know five miles up or half a mile up or how many people are doing that so anyway that's you know pennsylvania is just kind of a I, I really felt like I was wasting time in there. And I understand now why people say, oh, just if you really don't have time to do the trail and you're trying to get most of it done, just skip Pennsylvania. I did like, in Pennsylvania, I did like Michaud State Forest, which is right down there on the line. And then honestly, after that, it's a wash. The rest of the state isn't worth it. So that's why I'm like... And even the towns, like... Like, you know, right now, and I, I guess the bubble is, is kind of short in the summertime that goes through PA, like, they may not make as much money as the southern towns make off of the hikers, so they just kind of don't cater to them as well. And, uh, like, Bunny just sent me a text message, and he said, or sent a text message last night that said that, like, some cop or something told him that he couldn't, like, hang out in front of Rite Aid. And that's, like, that's just, like... Again, that's the fault of the town and maybe of the trail too, because people aren't aware of the fact that like when you're down south, you show up to a town and everyone knows you're there and they're they're happy to have you. And you're it's like it's funny because you feel like you're like received by the town and by the population, including, you know, the cops, including the you know, the old lady on the corner. Like everyone knows you're there and they know that, you know, so and so down the street is is their, their store is benefiting from it. But yeah, Pennsylvania, like we got kicked out, like right before that heavy rainstorm, we got kicked out of that camping spot where clearly nobody was, you know, at, at, at like, like after the sun went down. And then, you know, Bunny sent a text last night and said that he was kicked out of Rite Aid or kicked not out of Rite Aid, but kicked out of the front of Rite Aid just for hanging out out front there for a little bit, even though he was staying somewhere else. <laughs> it's like... It's like kind of funny, and then you go into towns. There are a couple hiker hiker establishments, but like I thought that the town of um, what was that last town I was in there? Not Duncannon. Um, oh man, it was a town we were in two nights ago or three nights ago. Anyway, um, not Port Clinton wherever that big gap was that we just climbed. Anyway, we we that particular town, huge town. There was only one person who was tri who was catering to hikers in the town. And to get to if you had to hike to like we we had a hike in. It was a 2-mile hike in and that was it. Like that was the only place hikers could go and it's this huge town and if you didn't pay the $25, you had to hike 2 miles back out and there's nowhere to camp and there's no water. So, yeah, not, not a very, like, just, I'm just not very impressed. <laughs> well, I am impressed, just not in the way that I want to be impressed, right? And it sounds like we're, you know, oh, you're, you're this entitled hiker out there, and you have all these opinions about a poor Pennsylvania town. I, I don't think of it that way. I think that, I think that people come through, and we spent, we went in that town, and we spent a hundred bucks, you know, you get 20 hikers to go in for a night, and they're all going to spend $50 when they just show up. I mean, that's a that's a nice little chunk of money. And then over time, you're going to have a total of, you know, probably 1,200 to 2,000 hikers in the summer go through that one town. And even if only 1,000 of them spend, you know, 50 bucks, that's still $50,000. <laughs> 
but you know, don't don't make don't give these people a place to find their water. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a little I'm a little perturbed. I think Pennsylvania. I've got a lot of nasty opinions about it right now. Again, Michaux State Forest was amazing, even though I got kicked out of that camping spot once we got to Caledonia. Um, and the rest of the state, not even worth it. But I hiked it just to, just to capture the blazes. What is going on over here? All right, so the town that we had to hike two miles into, that was... Palmerton. Nice town, great town for, for a trail town, but there's only really one person in town who caters to trail, and it's a it's a hostile restaurant, which is perfect. Um, again, you hike all the way in there, and you don't like the accommodation, and you gotta hike all the way out. Um, there are guys sleeping underneath the railroad bridge because there was nowhere to stay. Um, and I think as you start having all the pressure from the northbound and the southbound go through there later on this summer, I mean, it's just going to be a, a real pain. And hopefully the town treats it as a, an opportunity and not as a chance to put up a wall. <laughs> um, and then um, Port Clinton was the town where you have to hike, like, uh, you know, down a street to go get water from some person's random front yard, even though there's, you pass like 10 spigots on the way to that house. Just that's like really the only person who's aware of the fact that all these people hiking through aren't just a bunch of, you know, homeless people. So it's just funny. Anyway, that's enough of my Pennsylvania rant. We can rant about Pennsylvania in the future. If you have any questions, be sure to ask.